congrats on the movie, dude. It is killer. I had to say that. Um, uh, it, for me, as a, as a, like, it took me back to my um, teenage bogan medal years of watching, you know, Friday the 13th on VHS uh, with all my mates and going, whoa, that's freaky. It's the same vibe. It's so nostalgic to me. Uh, is that era of movie, you know, do you, you know, was that part of the inspiration of this movie or what? Yeah, I mean, you know, we all grew up in the 70s and 80s and those horror films at that time, you know, especially the, the more gory films, like whether it was Halloween or Friday the 13th, yeah. or Evil Dead, yeah. things like that, there was this sort of element of kitsch that went through it because you just couldn't wait until someone showed up with a chainsaw. Oh, You're like, totally. oh, here it comes. This is yeah. going to be bloody. This yeah. is going to be great. But at the same time, you know, we grew up watching those rock and roll movies. Totally. Like Ramones Rock and Roll High School yeah. or Kiss Me, Phantom of the Park. So Absolutely. those two things, like that horror and the gore yeah. and the rock and roll, like they kind of go hand in hand. So it, it really is a throwback to those classic movies from that era um, because they're fun, you know? Yeah, they're, they they're are more fun. fun than yeah, it. they're fun. I, I, it actually, I actually did think about Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park because I went and saw that as a kid at the movie theatre. Uh, and yeah. and it's, it's definitely got that vibe to it. Um, uh, I, 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 really, um, I really like the fact that, for me, as a guy in a band, it wasn't just about a, being a horror or a comedy. At times, it verged on being a documentary because it was like... I, we've just been in the studio making a record ourselves, and it was like, man, those arguments you have, it's like, and the things you get to do to your bandmates, I wish I could do that sometimes, you know? <laughs> Especially what you do to Taylor, it's like, I could do that to Tom so many times. No, we're playing that riff only seven times, not eight, you know? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is that, okay, the screenwriters, Rebecca and Jeff, like, We've they they we've known them for a long time. They're sort of in the rock and roll scene. Like I remember meeting Rebecca through Eagles of Death Metal like 10 years ago, a long yeah. time ago. So they understand the rock and roll element. Yeah. They get that whole aesthetic. But Rebecca came to the studio while we were making the Medicine at Midnight record just so she could like see the dynamic between mm. all of us in that recording environment, you mm. know? And then of course she just exaggerated it and turned it. But all of those things are like wicked old rock and roll cliches. Absolutely. Like, someone's got writer's block or someone walks into a studio and starts clapping to hear the <laughs> acoustic. And, and then you start arguing over arrangements and the singer wants to go solo. Like all of those are just really funny rock and roll cliches. Totally. So you take that spinal tap element and then mix it with the evil dead. And yep. then you kind of have the studio. Success. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm having a hard time making up my mind which which killing was the best, but Taylor's is up there, man. I mean, it's just it was just so believable, very believable. Now, the other thing I've got to say is, as a Slayer fan, seeing Kerry King, <laughs> the guitarist from Slayer, act as your roadie was the coolest thing as a as a metalhead. Uh, how did that yeah. come about? How, do you know that guy well, or what? How how did you get him to get, be in the movie? Well, BJ, the director, we had worked with BJ on a couple of our videos. We did a video for a song called Run. He worked on that. We yep. did one for a song called Sky's Neighborhood. He worked on that. But he also made a movie with Slayer. So, and he's a rocker. BJ's a total rocker. Yeah. He was in punk rock bands, metal bands. He's a bass player. So it's all just kind of like part of the scene. But I mean, the greatest thing is that we have a movie that has Kerry King from Slayer <laughs> and Lionel Richie in the same totally. fucking movie. It's awesome, like, how does man. that even happen? <laughs> it is so great. I mean, and you got him to take off his his, his nail uh, wristband as well and act actually look like a roadie. He looks like a roadie. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's well, incredible. the other great thing is that, like, you know, in the in the movie, he like he seems miserable. And um, he's a great guy, <laughs> yeah. but it's like you kind of want the guy from Slayer to seem miserable. Absolutely. You know, like, you, that's the only way you could write all of those songs. You have to be unhappy with them. Absolutely, man. I, um, um, so how long was this idea sitting around for? Like, I mean, you know, we, we're sort of in the middle of a pandemic and we're going, oh, what can we do to, to, you know, reconnect with our audience, man? It's like, it's so painful because I love playing live, you know, and um, it's yeah. such a cool thing that you, you have this to, to, you know, reach out and connect with your, your audience, you know? How, how, how did you come about with this idea? Well, we started it before the pandemic. So mm. we made the record and then we finished the album in that house mm. and we redressed the house, set dressed it and stuff, and then started filming. 
we had six days left mm. and we had to shut down because everything went into lockdown. Mm. And then we waited for six or seven months to come back to it. And of course, when we came back, we had to work within all the new regulations and testing and guidelines. And we were just determined to finish it mm. because we had seen what we'd done. And we're like, oh my God, this is really good. We mm. have to finish this. We were one of the first major productions in Los Angeles to start filming again. But I think it was really like, you know, we just, we wanted, we wanted to finish it and not be held back mm. um, by all of the new sort of, you know, obstacles. And, mm. and we found a way to do it and we did it safely and it really worked out. But I mean, that's, you know, we're, we're sort of restless in that way. Like mm. we're not good at taking time off. We don't let grass grow under our feet. Mm -hmm. And we're constantly thinking of new ways to, to just, you know, reach out to the fans. And yeah, if, you, yeah. if you sit down and really think about it and think like anything is possible, mm. just think about it that way. Like we can do anything that we want to do. Totally. It's just a matter of having the drive to do it. And then you just go for it. Yeah, for sure, man. Hey, um, I, I'm sitting here, you know, I'm a singer in a rock band. The Project New Zealand got me into do interviewing. I'm not an interviewer. Uh, and it's it's interesting doing something out of your comfort zone. I'm just interested. How did the band find like learning dialogue? I mean, it's the one thing to stand on stage and play a rock and roll song, but to actually learn dialogue and then deliver it in a movie, it's it's a different thing, man. It's a different thing than being a rock and roll star. You know, like how did they yeah. how did they well, find you know, it? For we've been making those ridiculous videos for like 26 years, mm -hmm. and so when it comes time to make a video. We come up a lot of with a lot of the concepts for our videos. Sure. We direct some of our videos. So it was just sort of a, a, an extension of that, just a much bigger production. But, you know, I think with our band, um, we take the albums that we make very seriously. Mm. We take the live shows very seriously. Like we want, we really pay like real attention to those things. Everything else is just like, we're like kids in a candy yeah, store. Totally. We just go bananas. And so... I don't think anybody, to be honest, I don't think anybody took it too seriously. Mm. You know, we didn't imagine that it was going to be this full length feature film. Mm. And, you know, nobody's ordering tuxes to go to the fucking Oscars. Like, yeah, that's yeah. not happening. So when we got to the set, it was mostly just about having fun. Um, I don't really think anyone was, was nervous, but I, it was a challenge that we were willing to take. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, um, while I've, I, I think we're two minutes safe, but I just wanted to ask you. What are your feelings about, like, you know, uh, the live scene going forward? I mean, it's it's been a crazy time for musicians over here. I'm sure it's been a crazy time for musicians in America, worldwide. So, what are your feelings on on where do we go from here? You know, I mean, is it going to come back to what it was, or what what's going to happen? Well, I think most importantly, you have to find a way to do it that keeps everyone safe and protected. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah. Um, the most important thing is that you can come together um, and share the communal live mm. experience um, by taking care of each other. Yep. So we went on a tour last year and we did a big run through the US and we managed to do it safely. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it just, it depends on where you are yep. and the venues yep. and the regulations that um, if you can find a way to make it work, mm. You should, because I wrote an article about this for this magazine called The Atlantic, and it was called The Return of Live Music. Yep. I wrote it right in the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I basically talk about how the live experience, that tangible yep. communal experience, mm -hmm. human beings need to experience that. Like, as humans, for sure. we need to like we get do. together and share that we sort do. of thing. So it's just a matter of figuring out a way to do it that'll safe. keep everyone safe. Yep. If you can do that, then you got to do it. Hey, talking about that, when are you guys going to be down here in New Zealand and can we support you next time? <laughs> yes, you should. Yes. Absolutely. We yes. haven't played shows with each other for so, what has it been, like 15 years? How, when was the last time we played with you? It was like uh, Big Day big Out day a million out, years ago? It was about 15, yeah. 20 years ago, dude. So it was ages. 20 years ago. Yeah. Right. We can all we can all get together, have a beer, and we'll look at the cute pictures of when we were young. When we, when we looked we'll good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hey, great to talk to you, Dave. I've got to go. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, hopefully, we get to see each other and our paths cross again. Good luck with the movie. All right, my brother. Okay, Take bro. care. We'll see you soon. See ya.